different than you are. And that's why I relate so well to these men because I connect. Because I became the enabler. I became uh, I, I became everything that ugly, everything that I didn't want to be, and I hated it all the while. But that's what I felt like I had to do to hold, to hold my marriage together. And it got to a point because, see, I was a product of divorce. And I always I swore long, early on that regardless of what I had to do, I was going to make my marriage work. I got married in 1990 uh, to a girl I've been dating since uh, I was 16, she was 14. Um, we were married 17 and a half years, and it got to a point to where I, um, I felt like God released me from that marriage. So um, I divorced her. And within six, within six months, she was in jail facing 40 years to life. She, and she will tell you, and I'm not going to try to tell her story because it's a wonderful story. Um, great testimony as to what God can do. Um, but she, um, both of our daughters, she saw, she visited with them through glass on their birth- birthdays. Um, it, was, it was very heartbreaking. <coughs> it, was, it, was, it was a horrible experience. But I knew because... I, 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 somewhere I knew it was better to have one functional parent than two dysfunctional. And, uh, and you know, it, it got to the point in our relationship before we divorced that I had lowered, I had lowered my expectations so much that I thought that I had convinced myself that if we were arguing, well, at least we're talking. And you know, there, there's something wrong with that. That's not the life God wants us to have. And. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll move on because I'll be here all day. Uh, 2010, uh, we, we finally had a place in, uh, over in Cardwell. And uh, I had this young man that was just calling me. He'd call me about every week, and then he disappeared. And he'd call me about every and then he'd call me. And, and I use this analogy quite often. And I, I, I refer to it as a drowning man. If you were to see someone drowning in a lake, you would see them break the surface of the water and try to grab whatever they could grab. And then they would go under if there was nothing there to grab. Well, that's how I see these guys in the world. They're breaking the surface of the water and they're reaching for whatever they can grab and there's nobody there to grab them and help them up. And folks, I'm going to tell you, this is not a law enforcement problem. This is not a world problem. This is a body of Christ problem. I say that because if we were doing what we were told to do in Matthew 28 19, then we would not have some of the issues we are facing today. We wouldn't have the overcrowded jail systems and prison systems. We wouldn't have young men dying in their addictions not knowing who Jesus Christ is. So uh, I'm just I'm just blessed beyond measure. Uh, I will finish that other story real quick. Uh, I've got a lot to say. Um, I did divorce my wife in 2008. Uh, like I said, within within uh, six months she was in jail. She spent 90 some odd days in jail, and. A year and a half later, she was the woman of God that I knew she could be, and I remarried her. Um, so we've got quite the interesting story, uh, but I've got some guys that have interesting stories as well. And, and I want to say something. I, I sit here and I watch, and, and I watch this audience, and I watch this crowd, uh, and I see. It, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to see what, what I see. I see young men uh, who, who start out like this, you know, and then, you know, and, and, and then I see, <clears throat> I, I see, and I'll tell you, I saw something a while ago that just touched my heart so deep. Uh, and 
I mean, because I've, I've got a gentleman with me today, and uh, and I just saw uh, he, he was he, he was broken. He he, he sat down in his chair and he he was crying and and uh, Austin, stand up for a second. I saw that little man right there. I saw him reach over. He knows it's going to be all right. He knows you're good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Let me put you on the spot. You can give you later. Uh, but it touched my heart. And I look across this audience and I see I see things being restored. I see people crying who, who probably haven't cried in a while. I see... I see and you know, I say I see these young these these guys and they're you know they're they're feeling something that they've not felt before because see we've all got this this void in us when we start. We've all got this this hole, this emptiness within us, and we seek and search to put everything else in there and nothing ever fits. And then finally one day we realize that's a God shaped hole. Only God fits there. And then we start making progress. You know, um, I, 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 I am blessed and highly favored and deeply loved of God to be able to witness the growth day to day, to see these young men go from this right here to full blown surrender. Yeah. And that's, you know, that, that's so awesome. Surrender. It, it's 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 hard to get to that point of surrender, but once you're there, it's it's easy from there. Um, let me run briefly through what we do. Uh, if you don't have any brochures, I didn't bring any uh, the new brochures with me, um, but I've got our they're functional. Uh, we like David said, we just revamped uh, and refreshed the look of Shepherd's Soul Ministry. And it's not anything we did that was, uh, all we did was change some letters and some colors and do some fancy stuff and make it look all pretty and uh, kind of like what we do on the outside. You know, we, we all put on our mask and uh, go to church and bless your brother and how you doing, all are wonderful, things are great, life is lovely, knowing that we're gonna go home to a failing marriage because Christ is not the center of it. Knowing that we're going to leave there and that's the last thought we're going to have with God. We done our, we did, we went through 20 to 8 and we're good till next Sunday. <coughs> you know, it's easy to clean the outside of the cup. David said we did some revamping and uh, he said he made a reference to the one. And I'm, not, I'm going to paraphrase um, Luke 15:4. It's what we, it's, a, it's our new campaign. Uh, what man have you had in hundred sheep? And loses the one, doesn't forsake the 99 in the wilderness to go after the one. I'm the one. You're the one. We're all the one. We're the one he came after. <coughs> Whether you had an addiction or whether you didn't, he came after you. Right. You know, and so many of these guys can relate to that because they've been running. They've been running, they've been running. That's what they know to do is run. They've been taught to self medicate. They've been taught to, you be a man, you don't cry. And I'm, I'll show you, that's what my dad told me. You don't cry, you don't show weakness. You trust yourself and yourself alone. You do not um, depend on anyone else to take care of your bills. You put money back for a rainy day. You are self-reliant. Nobody ever told me about God. Of course, I, you know, I, I mean, I'd gone to church and uh, vacation Bible school. You know, mom and dad said, you know, you need to go with your cousins, go down to the church there. Uh, you know, and everybody was going up to the altar. Oh, you know, everybody, we, we were being coaxed actually up to the altar as youngsters, um, and give our hearts to God. And that's truly the way it's interpreted to me. Uh, I didn't understand. I didn't, I guess I see now that it was about numbers. I understand now that it wasn't about 
I mean, they, 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 they told me the name of where I needed to go, but they didn't tell me that I needed to have a relationship. You know, nobody told me that, it, that I wasn't done when I gave myself to him. You know, but that's what we do at Shepherd's Fold is we teach these men that it's not about a sign over the door. It's not about a set of rules hanging on the wall. Or it's not about a bulletin you get and put in your hand when you walk in. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ and a working relationship. It's about knowing who he is and him knowing who you are. He is the, he is the source. He is the everything. And these guys learn that when they come in here. You can look at our brochures and, they, and they've got all the, the wonderful criteria that, that you know a lot of people put. But... One thing about the fold, like David said, it's not about your money. It's not about the way you look. It's not about all that you've done. I want these men to know that regardless of what they've done, where they've been, who they've wronged, who they stole from, that there's a God in heaven that loves them right where they are, but loves them too much to leave them there. They need to know that there's not a big mad God sitting up in heaven with a big fly swatter waiting to get them. They need to know it's okay to come down to an altar of prayer. It's okay to break a tear. Because the first time that I ever cried and people saw me cry, truly sobbed, something in my mind said, you just shown weakness. But something in my spirit said, you just became the strongest man I've ever seen you become. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about not being conformed to the ways of the world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. See, don't get me wrong, I love my earthly daddy. I love him. We have a great relationship. But my heavenly daddy, is so much more to me. I can crawl up in his lap when I need to. I can confess to him. I can tell him things that only he needs to know. And that's what we advocate to these guys, that Jesus Christ is the only lasting solution to any life-controlling issue. You know, and it's not about meth, it's not about alcohol, it's not about opiates or heroin or, or it's not about, it, it could be as simple as unforgiveness in your life. Do you have all against your brother today? Then your sin is no greater than theirs. Sin's not measured. It's equal. And now we need to remember that. Folks, I'll tell you, we really test the spirit, so to speak, when we get invited to a church because there are people. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to be real with you because I'm, you can ask any of the guys, I'm, I'm kind of a really blunt and somewhat abrasive person. And that, that's just my makeup. That's who I am. But I'm not going to sugarcoat anything that we, we've called and tried to get into churches and we want people to hear what God's doing in the lives of these men. And we hear responses such as, we don't want those people in our church. Nobody gets in my husband's pulpit. Those are the kind of responses that the body of Christ is giving us. I thought we were supposed to glorify and tell folks about what God's doing. You know, God's not retired. He's still in the miracle work of business. Amen. He's still doing what he set out to do. Everything's still doing what it told it to do, what he told it to do, except us. The sun's still coming up in the east, sitting in the west. That's what God told it to do. But man's not. We're not going out and making disciples. That's where we're falling short, and that's where Shepherd's Fold comes in. Um, at this time, I would like to ask whomever to come and share their testimony. So whoever jumps up first can have it. Thanks, Gary. This is 
part of what we do is we take our testimonies and we stand in front of folks and we tell them what God has done in our lives. We show them the change that's been made in us. I won't go into a lot of the dirty details about my life, but just understand after uh, 25 years of hard drinking, there was a train wreck behind me. I ended up in Arkansas in 2010 with uh, basically my dog in a trunk full of clothes. And in 2012 or 2013, I had to shut this over. Uh, I had uh, no supervision whatsoever on my life, and I ran it accordingly. What brought me to Shepherd's Fold was a mistake. I was looking for a place, another place that I could uh, stay while I worked, and it was a simple trade-off. They wanted money, and I wanted to work. And they, you know, it was a good simple trade-off. Well, the place wasn't in existence anymore, but there was two Fold brothers there building beds, and they slipped me a card, and that, and it's out of the grace of God that I ended up here at Shepherd's Fold. I went in there, and I had. Uh, I had some drugs in my system, and I needed to get cleaned up for a piss test. That was about nine months ago. <laughs> I'm still there. What God has done in me has... When God showed me my heart, I seen all the selfishness that I had. Everything I had done for years was for gear. And it was to keep me going whatever I wanted to do, whatever direction I wanted. When God showed me my heart, I was humiliated at the things that came out of my mouth, the things that I would do that people would see, and I, was, I just couldn't believe that, that I was that kind of a person. When you bring it to your attention, you start watching things. You start looking at how you're acting, and you pay attention to those things, and slowly and surely you change. I'd like to say that uh, I took a step forward and that uh, I made the effort that it was something that I did. But to tell you the truth, folks, I got so fed up trying to change and couldn't. I, I, no matter what I did, you know, I could go to the altar and I could lay my issues down there and ask Jesus to pick them up. I'd walk right back to my seat with him. Jesus Christ was the one that changed me. And it happened about the time I got so aggravated that nothing was happening in my life and fed up and just quit trying to change myself. And I looked around for something to do and it, it started with just picking up trash or something behind a brother. And then it was take over a little responsibility in the kitchen. Well, my brother's still eating so I'm going to wash his dishes. And it started small like that. And <coughs> While I was looking over here for something to do in these guys' lives, don't you know what God did in the last 40 years of my life? He changed it. I gave these guys a day of my time, and God gave me back my life. I can look at things now and see the selfishness was swapped right over. And as soon as I got my eyes off myself and what I wanted, God was able to work in my life, and he was able to do things. I have no plans to go anywhere. God's got this, and he'll send me where he wants me to go. I just pray one day I get to hear those beautiful words. Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. That's what I want. I thank you once again for welcoming us up here. And uh, there are some brochures and some business cards in the back back there. Folks. There's somebody in your life someplace that needs a hand. That's what I'm here for. I may not be able to help you out myself. Shepherd's Fold may not be able to give you what you need. But I know places. Okay? I know people I can talk to. So make use of the resources. Thank you very much. there last year. Um, 
Well, I was I was there for about a month, and um, I had an attitude and authority problem, so I was I left. I went to the state commission. Uh, and if anybody in here has never stayed at admission, that's a that's a humbling experience, especially if you have a pride issue or or you think you're you're over somebody or you're better than somebody. Just or go help us at a soup kitchen, and it'll 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 really show you what you do now. Uh, stay there. Um, I was uh, I had an opportunity to come back to the fold, and I did for about three weeks. And um, well, we were went to the store one day, and some situations happened. I got a got a girl's number uh, that was that was kind of against the, the rules. Uh, but I was I, I had an opportunity to still stay and I chose to leave. I uh, went back to state commission. Um, she had to come pick me up. I stayed with her. Uh, we moved back down to Searcy, where I'm from, uh, where I was living. And uh, you know, I, I stayed clean for, for that period of time. Uh, that relationship wasn't working out. It was based off of something that uh, well, it was it wasn't based off of anything. I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I got a little clean time. I could uh, I could go out and I could I could do this. You know, uh, I you know I wanted Jesus to help me, but then you know once I was good and clean, I was like, oh, you know, thank you, and I stepped over this way and uh, left him right there, or I thought I did. But um, she left, and I, I don't think it was probably about uh, three or four days. No, three or four weeks later, started using again. Uh, and all along, I've been, I was on, uh, I had some health problems. I was on uh, chemotherapy uh, for, for about six months, and all that time, I, I had been using, uh, still using the same thing I was. And uh, that is, if anybody knows anything about uh, cancer treatment or hepatitis C treatments, that is a, uh, that's a horrible thing to go through. It's a, it's a really depressing, on top of a drug addiction, it, it's depressing. Uh, I didn't want to even uh, talk to God. God wasn't about in my life. I was raised in church. Uh, but I never, it was basically the same thing how Steve was saying, you know, it was it was an altar call and it was <clears throat> it was all about, the, the church I went to, it was about the uh, It was that mass. It was just, uh, well, after after about six months of, of chemotherapy, I, I got to feeling better, but um, I had a great job going. Um, at this time, I was still living in Sarcy. Uh, it just started slipping again. I mean, I, I never got right the whole time. Uh, once, I, once I started up again, I, was, I wasn't right. But I uh, had an opportunity to come back to the fall, and I had lost my job. Really lost everything. I got fired from the job for um, for uh, theft of property, and uh, I had to go go do uh, some time in jail. But I knew I knew who to call. I knew when I was finally fed up. I knew uh, I knew who to call because there was a seed planted before uh, when I came the first time. There was a seed planted, but you know it's so I called David. Uh, <coughs> I had a shepherd's pole. Uh, first week in there, I had some attitude problems. I uh, had some physical aggression, not with anybody, but with a wall. Uh, punched a hole in the wall, uh, which would would have been, you know, I could have left then. Uh, Steve could have very well told me to pack my bags. But there's something that people see in me that I've always had a hard time seeing in myself. Well, it, it took a couple weeks, but uh, this time it's it's a whole lot different. Psalms 51, if y'all have never read Psalms 51 or have, that was a uh, that was a breaking point in my in my recovery to where that's what I needed. I was a real depressed person growing up, and that is uh, Psalms 51 just gave me well, it allowed Jesus Christ to come back into my life and really do something that I wouldn't let him do. Uh, there was a, a power struggle there between between me and me and Jesus, I, or me and God. 
I wanted to do it because I thought I had the power, and uh, it's impossible. But that's where God works. He works in the impossible. Uh, that's when He just asks you to take a step back, and He makes it look uh, well, it, as it's easy. Uh, but uh, everything's going. I, I'm doing a whole lot better than what I was. So my uh, my God's good. And, uh, good. I've seen my kids through plexiglass, and that finally broke me to realize I needed help. And, uh, you know, it's hard sometimes to admit that we need help. And uh, I always thought I was a man, but uh, I realized I was still a kid, and I had a lot of grown to do. And like I said, I haven't been there that long, but uh, God's opened my eyes, and uh, I know what I got to do. I don't know what he's got in store for me, but uh, I just, I guess it all started by not kind of having a father growing up, and uh, my mom was never really around. Uh, I met my wife at 16, and then two years ago she passed away, and um, I guess kind of lost focus on what was important in life. And uh, I'm just thankful that Steve has a place like this for guys like us because uh, I've been told before by many, by many of judges and uh, people that uh, I was a menace to society and I didn't deserve a second chance. But um, I'm thankful for God for giving me second chances. Amen. Every one of us deserves it.
working on the rear bow. Uh, there was a place down by Mr. T's called the Country Club, and me and my uncle used to love to go there. Uh, I was taking him home one night. He was drunk. I didn't think I was. Uh, I thought I was good. Uh, I was in my dad's little S10 pickup, <coughs> dropped him off, uh, headed back, and apparently I straightened out a curve. I broke a telephone pole in half, six feet high. There was six foot of it standing out of the ground. Okay, the, the power lines, and it had, it had been raining, the ditches were full, the power lines were in the water. I couldn't get out the driver door. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get out the driver door. And so I kicked the passenger door open. I jumped out in waist deep water, went, ran back to my uncle's house, and couldn't get him to wake up. The next thing I know, the cops are. My dad is flying. My dad was actually chief of police of a small town there, and um, they're telling him that they can't find my body because the power is shut down all over town because of the, the, the transformer blew when the lines hit the water. Uh, there was, they didn't understand how I waded the water without getting electrocuted. They didn't, they didn't know where I was at. You know, I can't explain that. Uh, there, there's just so many things, but all I know is that God had a plan and he knew what he needed to, for me to do for him. You know, now do I stand before you today claiming to be the first person God has ever called to do anything but absolutely not. Um, do I stand before you today and say that I am shepherd's foe? No, sir. No, ma'am. I am just a servant. I am a vessel that God is using to pour into the lives of men that he has something for them to do. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I want you to know that we, uh, we, we play such a part in God's plan. It's sometimes I, I mean, we just sit around in amazement. And I mean, I can, I can give you, for instance, of how good God is. And, and but just in the last two weeks, and uh, and. Uh, but I want you to know more about the fold. Uh, we, we have a food pantry uh, that we try to keep stocked for the, for the families of the fold. Um, we give away things that, uh, feminine hygiene products, shampoo. Uh, we, we just try to, we try to provide it. Because the fact of the matter is, usually when the man finally finds his place of brokenness and he humbles himself and he forgets all that pride that he was taught and conditioned as a as a young boy and admits that he needs some help and he steps out of the family dynamic, that's probably the majority of the money coming into the home. And we don't want to see these wives have to take another job or take on more struggle uh, or the kids have to suffer any more than they have because of his absence. So we try to fill that void for them. We try to help them any way we can. When these guys come in, I, I want you to know that Shepherd's Soul is about empowering men. Not just to become the individuals God created them to be, but to become the husbands and the fathers and the priests of their home. Amen. Because we serve a God of order. And just as Christ is head of the church, so is the man of head of the home. And I don't say that to be chauvinistic or any, any other way, but I mean, there is an order to the God we serve. And we need to know that. But I also teach these men that, look, if you're not being the priest of your home and your wife has to step up and put on your shoes, look, that's, we're being disobedient because she should be submissive to you, but she has to know that you are seeking God for every decision for that family. Amen. He has to be that, 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 that cord, that center cord. Um, he has to be the source. You know, you young guys. Statistically speaking, statistics show that you 
will be married one of these days if you're not now. You need to be able to bring something to the table. Amen. You need to step in knowing what your responsibilities are. You need to know that you're, you're supposed to, you're a covering. You pray over your wife. You need to know that you need to be sharing God's word with your children. You need to be teaching. You are the priest of that home. You need to be teaching and empowering your family. These guys come in, if they don't have a GED, they get one. They go through life skills program, um, <coughs> which entails things such as budgeting, uh, anger management, self-esteem, parenting classes, things like that, things that we should know. Um, I know one time she taught a class on balancing your checkbook, and I had to sit in on that one. Uh, I mean, it's a struggle sometimes. Uh, but... We are not some glamorous Ritz Carlton place that you might think. We, we don't sit on uh, hundreds of acres and, and bring in thousands and thousands of dollars. But God loves us and He takes care of us and He meets our every need. He, he knows exactly what we need and when we have need of it. Um, we know to not forsake our humble beginnings. Uh, we know God has a plan and He is in control. In control. Uh, I will let you know that Friday night in our unveiling event uh, that Greg and Hugh made it to, uh, we did um, announce that we, and I say we, but it's only because of the faith of one individual, but we have just purchased four and a half acres in Paragould.
I need you, and I, this thing is not my... My strength has gotten me nowhere in life. It is God, God, God. And except I come to Him as a child, broken, can't do it, I don't get grace. God loves to give grace to the humble. God loves to come and rescue. God loves to redeem and gather. And if I walk in my eyes, I can fix this thing. I can fix this thing. <coughs> when you're when you're on your own, you're at your weakest. On the other hand, when you've done all you can do and you realize it's still not enough, that's where you need to be. I've done what I can, and it still doesn't work. And having done all, all I could do is just stand. This could stand. God, would you do this thing? And that's what I want to ask you today. Are you, are you doing this on your own, convinced that I can do this thing? Or have you just dropped the wall and said, I am insufficient without you, God. I am insufficient, and I'll never be sufficient, and I need every bit of you in my life. And when you're broken, he's the repairer. You he made you. He made you. <coughs> With a plan, an absolute plan in your life that you come to him and run after him, and he wants to give you every desire of your heart. Would you stand with me? Would you bow your heads? But I want, following this head bowing part and prayer, I want to open the altar. Okay, open this place up here. You haven't given it all. You've made a pretense. Or you've done. I'm just saying, it's time. It's time to say, I'm at the end. And God, I'm lifted. Let me say it this way. You have an audience of one that you really need to impress. One person that you need to impress. And he's not impressed with anything that you can do. He's impressed with, he's impressed with his son. And he says, I came to redeem you and rescue you. And that's exactly what his son has done. He came to redeem and rescue you, rescue you from the pit. We do a mess. He does a fix. We are dead. He wants to make alive. Father, this morning we come before you with our with with our nothingness and say we've tried and we've tried and sometimes we're obstinate and we're convinced that we can do it, we can do it, and you just come alongside me, God, and I'll do my thing. And he says, Would you just get to the end of your rope? This morning, oh God, I wish I, my prayer is that those who have been still convinced that I am good enough and I don't need nothing else and just let me do my own thing and I know I can fix this. Father, I pray that you will reveal yourself to them as you reveal themselves to them. That apart from you, we do, we, we're nothing. That apart from you, that would come as a child. Bring back the innocence of Lord God. You come here this morning and it's time to time to take a look. Is that you? That's the question. Is that you? You, you haven't really come to the end. But I'm here today to tell you your biggest decision of your life is to come to the end of yourself and lay it all down. Lay it all down. I lay it all
baggage very often. We all come with baggage, and there's a little piece of pride and, and stuff just gets in the way. And uh, that's the point of the song. Would you, you come here? I want to ask you to pray a prayer. And we're going to be we're going to be dismissing in just a minute. This is my wife, Judy, by the way. Um, and she often has a gift to speak sometimes, and I don't know that that's going to be the case this time. She has a gift when, in counseling, somehow she can say about three sentences, and she's got a man falling. And I don't know what the deal is. It's like, I can't do that. But it just brings them to the feet of Jesus. And, uh, and I'm just, just going to say, Judy, could you pray? Let's pray. Father, we so love you. We so love to be in your presence, God. We know when we come together, we come together, you inhabit our praises, God. And this morning I know that that's the case. Father, this morning we heard these men just open their heart up before you. And before us, and just lay it out there and say what you have done and what you are doing in their lives, God. Because I know you as my compassionate Father who rescued me from a hole nobody could take me out of but you. I know what I sense that you're doing it in them as well. You do it for anybody. You're not a respecter of persons. And it doesn't matter if you've been addicted to drugs or, or you've, you've lost who you are in, a, in, a, in some kind of conflict or, or you, you've lost your house, you've lost your... It, it doesn't matter about anything. Wherever we are, whatever hole we find ourselves in, there is never a pit so deep that the God, God who created it all, cannot find us and rescue us. So God, for what you're doing, shepherd's soul, I give you praise. I thank you, God, that there's a place that you've raised up Steve and his wife. You've raised them up and called them and told them that they are to represent your heart. You're calling you to pull them to pull these men in and give them a place. Give them a place to be real and to open up and say, God, I can't do this on my own. The truth of the matter is, God, we all need a place. We all need a place to go. There are people hanging around us. Not physically, so physically, but God, spiritually, they're dying. And in a hole where they don't know where to go. We do, the Steves of the world, the Steves in this world, God, know. The Brents of this world, know. The Judies of this world, we know, we know. So God empowers God. Engulf us, God. Overtake us in such a way, God, that we don't hold back ever. That we say to those in the pit, there's a way out of there. There's a way out of there. You can't find it on your own. You must have God. You must have God to come out of that hole. Some of us are in a hole of addiction. Some of us are in a hole of rejection. Some of us are in a hole. The devil comes home to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. We see it everywhere, God. And we, your people, we, the people of Almighty God, have the answer. God, may we take it. May we take what you've given to us and take it forward. Take it forward. We live in a dark world, God. But you say we're the dark. He's the greatest. The light shines the brightest. So, God, make us all the people you intend us to be. May we not waste our days, or our words, or our thoughts, or our actions. May they all be, oh God, what pleases you. And just as our brother says, as we step into your presence, all that day.
day when you come for me, or you come for us all at once, on that day, you can say, welcome home. Well done. Well done. Now good and faithful servant. I want that to be me, oh God. I want this to be all these young men. I want it to be everybody in this building. Everybody who calls you, Lord. Everybody who's called upon your name. May we fight the good fight. May we finish the race well, God. So that you welcome us home and say, well done. Father, we come to you this morning and pray together. Not by anything that we have done, but by the authority, the power, and the forgiveness of your Son. So in his name we pray. His name alone. We are going to receive an offering. Um, we we receive at River Black one offering a week. Um, I'd like everybody to understand exactly how this offering is going to be this morning. Um, I guess I'm just taking charge and saying do this. Unless you write um, something to indicate that you want this to go to your to the church, as in tithe. Okay, you might say River Black or something on your check, but other than that. All the offering this morning will be going to Shepherd's Fold. All of the offering, unless you indicate otherwise. And we'll look at it closely, okay? But it'll all be going to them. And so we are going to receive an offering. John, would you come up? Noah, would you mind coming up and you stand on this side over here and receive? Uh, Buddy, would you would you mind standing on this side, down this aisle? Just kind of, John, take, take a little and we'll just, uh, we'll go that way. Now, second thing, before you guys start, I would, I would like to just experiment once while we're receiving an offering. Offering is a form of worship, okay? We ought to be smiling and we ought to be happy, but I would like to worship at the same, same time we're doing this. So I'm going to ask Matt, David, Steve to stay also, and uh, is it Brandon? Brandon, would you, if you come up, Brandon, if you go up, okay? I'm just saying, figure out something, okay? And uh, with Steve, if you're going to sing, or if he's going to play, I don't care. We're gonna, I just want to find something quickly, and we're going to kind of jam together while we receive the offering, okay? I think it, I think this will work, okay? So, we're going to receive it. Matt, Michelle, you got something? Say that again? 